This is the Three Skeevers Podcast. All right, episode 38 of the Three Skeevers Podcast with Grim from Grim's Forge Gaming and myself, Icy with Icy Fire Gaming. How are you doing, Grim? Good. How are you? I am doing great today. It's very sunny and sweaty. So let's get into today's... Well, let's get our anecdotes in first. So, th- <laughs> so this week, I was trying to get my Imperial City quests completed. You know, all part of the the eight the eight quests that you can do in IC, just to you know get that all all that stuff completed because I like to hunt for achievements and stuff. And I know we both know this when we're in IC, whether it's in the districts or the sewers. Whenever we see PVE players, we just smoke them right out the gate because, hey, the train's coming and it ain't stopping. So now that I was, and that's from the, you know, the predator aspect of it, but now I was playing prey, having been the predator, and there were a couple moments where I fell subject to uh, being eaten alive by some PVPers, and I'm not there to PVP, I'm just there to get my my questing in okay and this only i only died twice but after the second death i realized you know what this sucks i get the frustrations but hey it's all part of the game time to adapt and fix this resolution so (laughs) i was gonna say something ridiculous like yeah so i hacked everybody and now they don't bother me anymore but (laughs) (laughs) yeah i wouldn't even joke about that (laughs) yeah no that that was a joke so what i did was i got a vampire bite maxed out my vampire down the sewers and once i got to stage four you have access to that sprinting passive that allows you to after three seconds of sprinting you just go invisible and then you could just run through anything and everything for the most part obviously not through walls but you get the idea and Mm -hmm. oh man it made my it made the the remaining part of that quest or the whole storyline for the ic so much easier because i didn't have to crouch and hide and whatever if somebody was running towards me in three seconds i was a ghost and i would just run through them and everything so i was fine and I guess that was my way to adapt around it. And I will say this, I found that was pretty interesting. When you go through an IC gate, you have the sanctuary buff that lasts for 30 seconds. So you can sprint and walk whatever, and it won't pull you out of it. But when you have the stage four vampire passive, you can actually sprint, go invisible while you have sanctuary active the whole time. So you can get anywhere within that district, as long as you don't, make any stops or whatever in one shot no problem and still have your sanctuary buff up so you can go from district to district not die and still be in sanctuary the whole time because even if someone did find you or come across you while you were invisible or like revealed you with a flare or mage light you would be fine because you still have sanctuary so i thought that was a pretty interesting find during my pve earlier this week yeah so now we're going to see a lot of people just stepping into a zone sprinting around to see if there's any enemies out and about and and then deciding if they want to jump in the water or not yeah i mean it does make to me it makes sense because i I pvp there primarily so when i was just doing the questing i knew it was just a temporary thing just for a couple hours so do I recommend everybody to go vampire whenever they go into IC if they are a straight up PvE year? No. But if you're just trying to get your questing done and then you never plan on going back there again, yeah. Engage in some vampire type activities and get it done. And then just go to a cleansing spot in the Mages Guild, in I think any area for the most part, and just get rid of it and you're fine. Yeah. So it seems what seems like that makes the most sense to me. But speaking of vampires, I heard you uh, you had a nice little moment, Grim, with Fragment Soul uh, earlier this week. <laughs> yeah, he and I shared a moment yesterday. <laughs> it, actually, you can find it on his TikTok if you guys uh, check out Fragman Saul. Uh, Saul, he is on the EU server, and I was on the EU server working on Snake Eyes, and I needed to get Vampire for, you know, it's much easier to move around as a Nightblade with the um, 
vampire passives plus the additional weapon spell damage striking from stealth but uh uh <laughs> so he was doing a live stream and he you know just sent me an invite like hey you want to jump on want to run around what do you want you want to do some battlegrounds what do you want to do and after i jumped on i i did a battleground i think i only went seven and oh or something like that but it was really hard to play as a nightblade without you know at at cp it's really hard to play as a nightblade and not have those passives you know and so I just said, hey, would you mind giving me a vampire bite? And so he met me at the shrine. On my screen, I kind of take this submissive, you know, I get down on my knees, I bend forward, and he bites, he bends forward and he bites my neck. And there's the bite. On his screen, I'm just standing there with my arms crossed and he bends over in front of me and his head disappears uh <laughs> and it was funny because if you watch the tiktok feed he's getting ready to take a drink just as his character bends forward and my guy's just standing there with his arms crossed all proud <laughs> and he just starts laughing like if he would have had he would have spit out his coffee had he been a second earlier on that but it was so funny next thing i know it ends up on his tiktok is a, uh, you know <laughs> you 10k for this vampire bite you know pretty funny yeah, I'm surprised you didn't title it like Fragmental gives Grim a BJ or something like that. <laughs> like a vampire yeah. BJ or something. Yeah, right. But that was I the video, dude, I know it was only like what, like ten seconds or whatever, but that was pretty yeah. hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Oh, it's funny how on my screen you're you're doing something and then on his screen when you look at it, because I had the live feed up and it was uh, a little bit of a delay how yeah, my guy's just casually standing there with his arms crossed while he's doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> dude, dude. So you know how vampires, they have that, was it mesmerize ability? Their fourth mm -hmm. ability? So I so think of it like this. Kind of like how I think in like X-Men or uh, like with telepaths, they can kind of project illusions. So you, so <laughs> we, you can interpret it like this, right? When he was going to give you the vampire bite, he mesmer he mesmerized you. So you, in your mind, was like, okay, I'm going to get down on my knees. And he, and he gave me the bite, no problem. But what really happened was <laughs> you were just stunned in place while he, uh, he uh, yeah. su sucked you off or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is too now funny. Now we know. So, so I immediately went and got the vampire bite cleansed and went back and asked him for another. Now it's a regular every Wednesday thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Meridia, Meridia, help us all. Yeah. Uh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> I think we're not even hit the 10 minute mark yet. Uh, okay. So, uh, and one more anecdote. Uh, Grim, I think you wanted to talk about the World of Warcraft situation. Oh, yeah. You know what? I got like two or three more things oh, to okay. talk so about. We'll just, we'll just do anecdotes for, <laughs> for a while then. Yeah, sure. Welcome. Come along. Jump on the crazy bus with us. So uh, I just watched a video. This was from yesterday, the day before. World of Warcraft, last quarter. Who knows if these numbers are correct? Uh, I would imagine they are because this guy would get bashed or flamed to all bits if if his numbers weren't right. But uh, World of Warcraft in the last quarter lost 2 million players part of that is because asmongold the number one streamer in all mmo whatever <laughs> history <laughs> uh asmongold made the jump from world of warcraft to final fantasy 14 and so a lot of people are leaving world of warcraft and they're going to final fantasy 14 that's where asmongold's at um so that's a thing but then another contributing factor that the content creator provided was the constant grind is beginning to be too much every new patch every new whatever that they introduce in world of warcraft you have to farm new gear it's you always have to farm new gear you always have to put together new builds you always have to um and so it puts the state of the game in a constant you know revolving door 
that you're never set. And so it becomes to be too much like a job and not so much entertainment. And when he was talking about that, I said, that sounds very familiar. Now, I'm not trying to be negative right now. This is just an interesting observation, but that sounds very familiar. And then two days ago, um, he, here's one of the things that us content creators go through as a problem. And I've had uh, Barba223, we just had Dr. Gankenstein post on this. But whenever a new patch is getting ready to come out, unless you do evergreen type content, like tutorials or videos to help educate people, train people on things that don't necessarily pertain to the new changes that are coming out, um, or you're, you do a great job like uh, Deltia, Nephis, is there no one else? You do content that is very relevant. Here's exactly what I'm experiencing on the PTS server right now. And here's what you can expect moving forward. But everyone else that just does build videos and does PVP footage and stuff like that is in this kind of a weird spot. You don't want to release new build videos because they're just going to be irrelevant in two, three months, you know? And while that is job security or whatever, it's very much now a job you know it feels like a job and so it's kind of this weird spot that we're in but i don't know that whole thing with world of warcraft losing two million people last quarter because uh asmund gold left and ultimately i think he left because it became too much of a job too much of a grind um thought that was interesting i i can relate <laughs> what's your thoughts on that so I, I think it kind of it makes sense. I think depending on the type of game, right? So League of Legends, I, I feel like they, you know, at least when I used to play back in the day, they were making changes, you know, so so often that you know the meta was was as you said ever revolving or whatever. And for that type of game, the matches only last you know 50, twenty to forty minutes, right? If it went to like really late game or whatever. And so if they made a change to a weapon or some item in the game you know the only time you're farming it would just be like hey do i buy this first do i buy this last or do i just not buy it at all because there are better options right so it's not like there's a huge investment to grind and try to get this item because you have an opportunity every single game whether you want to put it on your make it part of your you know your core build or whatever but for games like i guess you know, MMOs, I can see how people can get frustrated and stuff. And I'm not sure if they have a collection system similar to ESO, but I guess in my situation, right, I have, I'm big on collecting all these, all these sets in the game, right? I think for Fungal Grotto, Fungal Grotto, Crypt of Hearts, I have all of these sets in there. So if for whatever reason they decided, hey, we're not, we're gonna, we're gonna nerf Ebon, okay, and I already have like a, a you know, a five piece set of Ebon, we're gonna nerf it, so no one's gonna use it anymore. Okay, no big deal. I just refund my transmutation crystals back, and then I just do something else with it, you know. So for me, it's not, it's not costing me any more time because. I guess one, I already have the I already have the gear collected, whether I'm going to use it or not. And then two, any sort of currency that I have in the game, because I, ha you know, if you know, the more, the closer you are to having the full collected set, then your return cost is zero for the most part. Right. So in those types of situations, yeah, like, you know, if they want to change, make all these changes and everything to sets that are not craftable, yeah, that's fine for me, but. You know, for things that you do have to collect, well, a lot of the sets, if they're not dungeon sets, you can just buy from guild traders. So, so we're fine in that respect. But I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm not familiar with WoW too much. I don't know how they do their systems over there. But if ESO is kind of going in that direction a little bit, then I, I think I'd be all right with it. But equally, again, I play support only exclusively. And, you know, all my sets are pretty much good to go for the most part, or at least my play style and how I like to play. So I don't know. I, I get why they're leaving if people are frustrated. And like you said, job security with the whole, Hey, it's, I mean, some people do play games for their 
actual job like that's what their main source of income is so mm-hmm. having them you know these changes allow them to make videos on various stuff yeah that makes sense but just like any other job people get tired people get sick of their job and they want to do something else so yeah that makes sense too yeah um the other thing i had was <laughs> you and i had kind of talked about this before um and without naming names but i'm going to name one name because it's hilarious um we had talked about all the content creators that post overpowered in their titles or it's on their thumbnail right overpowered whatever overpowered necromancer overpowered whatever and it's funny how many eyes gravitate to those videos as soon as it says overpowered right um so we were just talking about that you know you throw overpowered and then you go look at the build and it's like the it's just the meta build it's what everyone else is running and if you were to look at all the other content creators a lot of other content creators it's the same setup they're running right because there's no which is another side topic that we should probably talk about nobody really owns a build in eso right um great minds think alike or there's only only so many different setups you can run to be um successful in 1vx or outnumbered situations right um and as more gear sets are added especially with the new metas that are coming and the introduction of hybrids and stuff which is a part of our topic today we are going to see a huge shift in the meta i think right now that's where we're at is everybody's trying to find the meta and just as soon as we get this meta figured out we're going to be in the hybrid era and a whole different game but uh it's so funny rewinding we talk about all these content creators that put overpowered on their builds and 30 minutes ago i'm not even joking 30 minutes ago saw me in uk releases a video and it's got 150 views in the first 30 minutes and it says blackwood overpowered iron iron dragon knight full build and then in the top right hand corner it says such wow <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because he commented um i just kind of dip around and look at other content creators and not necessarily see what builds are working on but to kind of see um whether they're liking the new patch or the new cp or whatever and i just anyways there was an overpowered i very rarely click on these overpowered build videos by the way because every time you do it's the same build everywhere but so i click on this one i'm looking confirmed (laughs) similar build uh same situation because the meta requires it and in the comments uh saw man uk had on that build video i only watch build videos that say overpowered in them (laughs) you know and so now here he has a thumbnail with overpowered in it but i think it's a test um to see how many views you can get as a content creator just by dropping overpowered on the title and in the thumbnail so but very coincident. What's your thoughts on all that? So do you think it's, you think people are being not genuine when they use those buzzwords? Because I guess, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Be, hmm. I'm if not saying I, find I do out, the same thing. Oh, go ahead. If I find out that they're not being genuine, like they just put overpowered on whatever, unless it's a funny video, you know, but if, it's a realistic build video that they're trying to drop and they put overpowered on it. Then it, it turns me off to clicking on future videos, future videos by them. Yeah. It's because the, the thing is, this is like, they could run that build and have a lot of success with it. Maybe it's one of the most successful builds that they've ever been running. And so they feel the need to share it. You know, and they're going to say, this is overpowered, this is broken. Well, it's overpowered for you and your play style and the scenarios that you're in. But it, the whole thing is subjective. It depends on who you're playing against, where you're playing, what you know, are you playing on console, you're playing on PC. What's the meta? Are you on NA? Are you on EU? And that's something that I've become to realize is 
is that. So I don't know. Hmm. I feel like I have mixed opinions about this because I guess, yeah, if they're not, well, so for instance, my latest vid video was the how to make a, um, how to build a PVP healer. If I put yeah. overpowered, well, your in, healers in the, are going to be overpowered on NA, EU. It doesn't matter. The, just because? Well, no, because it's support and it's a healer. It If you're dominant with that support, dominant with that healer, in it, you're not the one that is doing the damage or securing the kills or going it um, head-to-head -head against the... You don't require enough pen to to fight the meta that they're experiencing. So you could take your healer builds and as long as your heals per second or your hots are hitting as hard as, you know what I mean? You could drop that build on console. You could drop that build on, and that's not to discredit what you're doing. I'm just saying it, it, it handles differently, right? I could, I could take my build on NA server, let's say Thanos, and put on meta. We're just going to label it meta, whatever it is. Put on meta on Thanos, and he'll hit people differently on NA server than he'll hit people on EU server because of the way they build. If I could somehow take that same setup of Thanos and go to Xbox, it would handle differently. If I could go to you know, PlayStation, it would handle differently. You could probably drop your builds in all three of those and it literally be overpowered in all those scenarios because you're not going against the enemy player. You're receiving damage from them and stuff and you can survive in any one of those metas. Take the highest damaging meta and you you can survive. So any of the metas that are less damaged than that, you're going to be just fine in. But as far as killing and securing kills and fighting outnumbered and things like that, the it, it's tougher uh, on the meta, uh, or it's tougher for those characters. You could be completely ineffective on one meta and be overpowered on another. Does that make sense? Hmm. I well, I guess because I, I was mostly thinking it. You could put overpowered of, on everything because it's true. <laughs> well, I mean, th that's what I'm saying though. Like, I think it's just more for marketing, kind of right. like so with like with, with my videos, at least, or you know, even my next video, sex sells, right? That's why I got a nice, attractive, custom <laughs> drawing of one of my characters in my thumbnails because mm -hmm. you know I'm pretty sure if somebody saw like a a nice pair of uh, melons, <laughs> get your melons over here, you know, then people are going to like want to click on it or something like that. So I, I kind of feel it's the same way when people use buzzwords, when they say things like overpowered or best build ever, or, you know, any of those, you know, just insert buzzword here and people will, people want to click on it. And I guess Grim, from your perspective, right? Cause you do, you know, you know, you know some bit about marketing and stuff, right? How to um, get that audience or crowd or customer interaction, right? You want to get people to come into your business and stuff. You're gonna use buzzwords and things like that. It's just, it's just all part of the ploy to get them to click on your video, whether it's actually overpowered or not. Who cares? You got the it, click. It 100%. Kind of it. Yeah, it 100% works. And it's, I haven't even watched Solomon's video. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I, I haven't watched it yet. I just was actually pulling up something else and it was in my recommended. And I was like, that's so funny because that's one of the things we were going to talk about today was the overpowered uh, quote unquote meta, you know, or, or the titles and thumbnails. And then he had, he had used it. So uh, I'm sure when I watch this video, I'll walk away saying that's pretty over overpowered. <laughs> well done, Saul, man. Um, we, like, dude, know. we could just put overpowered in this podcast title. I, I'm going to do like, that. Oh, most overpowered uh, podcast to topic, topic <laughs> you know, to date. Uh, let's do that. I want to do that in the title. That's <laughs> going right, to be on the, I'm going to change the thumbnail too. I'm going to add overpowered onto it just as a, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're doing a social test here, a uh, yeah. field test. 
Yeah, so when you send me a thumbnail, just put like overpowered in like song <laughs> letters or something. Just like going like diagonal across the board. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we get more, uh, more average views. Than that. Hey, I wonder if I could snip his overpowered right from his thumbnail and use it on our. <laughs> <laughs> You think Soulman's listening right now? He's like, not funny, guys. <laughs> I, I, it's funny because I think doesn't he go to like other people's videos and says, oh, "I just came to check here. If, if you're copying my build, now we're good." Or something yeah. like that. Or like, yeah. please don't, oh, yeah. please don't flag me or something. Oh yeah, he does such funny stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what we'll do is in the descriptions, I'm gonna link that video to Soulman's that we're talking about because everybody should go check him out. He's super funny, funny dude. And uh, super helpful, too. I think a lot of people might think that he's toxic or he's this or he's that because he's a ganker. Uh, but don't hate on the gankers, man. And he does very unique and interesting content. And uh, he he likes um, collaborating with other content creators, you know. And um, I don't know. He's He's been helpful, though. Like, he helped Fragman Saul with some gold to get started on and a server he's got uh steady eddie and he's helping steady eddie out and um he's he's been a help to a lot of people so uh behind the scenes i think a lot of people don't know that about saw man but he's extremely helpful and very much about the community and stuff so yeah i guess it's kind of like one of those things where um yeah i'm not you know like like when you when you when you pass when you die or something like then people realize oh like you know, all these people come out of the woodwork he was such a kind guy kind man and this this that and whatever i'm not saying someone's gonna die or whatever but you know we know him as a troll but you know deep down he's actually a nice genuine guy you know really yeah. cool down to earth yeah i mean he'll he'll um say i love you after he bombed you you know <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so nice <laughs> yeah that's so nice yeah you know so anyways um saw man you're awesome so you can hear that from us but i'm gonna i'm gonna snip your overpowered and we're gonna use it on our thumbnail today so oh that's um, funny <laughs> let's see what's the other thing oh uh, so th here's another thing uh, <laughs> we're third we're, dude, we're 30 minutes in and we still haven't even hit the topic <laughs> <yet> today <laughs> yeah why not I yeah, go ahead. Yeah, keep going, though. Why not? So earlier today, I got a comment on this was a live stream that I did. Um, I did a live stream on YouTube, and I was just running around doing battlegrounds and talking to chat, you know, as people logged in to see what I was doing and stuff. And, you know, like a lot of streamers do, you're running around a battleground, you're looking up at chat, you're talking to people, and you're just kind of playing, right? And that's pretty much the whole video consisted of that. It did also that particular live stream. I did my very first first person BG. So the full battleground in first person, which was crazy. So uh, definitely worth a watch. But anyways, this person, I won't name names, you can go find them yourself. In the comments below, they said, A wanton display of purposeful ignorance of the goals of Battleground. It's no wonder so many players can't play Battlegrounds with streamers setting such a bad example. Oh, Christ. <laughs> uh, you know... <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> that person is the person that I'm training in Battlegrounds. N not that person, but there are people that contact me after three years. Oh, this is a lot of people that want to get better at PvP. They contact me and they say, I've PvP'd for three years, PvP'd for four years, and I'm not getting any better. Whenever I run into a 1v1 or outnumbered, I die. You know? And it's because of the way they spend their time when they're doing battlegrounds they're not using the battlegrounds to get better um creating a checklist they're they're strictly playing the objective and i'm not denying that you won't get better at pvp by playing the objective solely but after two or three years you're marginally going to be better at carrying the chaos ball you're marginally going to be better at capturing a flag you're going to be better at you know these different things you'll hate whenever a death match comes up, <laughs> you know, 
and you'll stick with your squad. You'll stick with your team because, you know, if you get peeled and you're out by yourself at any point, you'll die. And so when I see that, that comment on there, it's just like, I don't think a lot of people have a good understanding of what PvP is in this game. So let's take it from the top down. The top down is the highest MMRs in this game. Nobody plays the objectives. Nobody. There's very few. Very few on the highest MMR. And why is that, Icy? Um, is it because we just care about the fight? You just care about the fight. That's what you're there for. We're there for the PvP. You know, it could say chaos ball and nobody picks up the chaos ball and it's literally 15 minutes of just death match. <laughs> you know, that's happened before, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll just share my quick uh, tidbit. So, yeah. I yeah, I had a, a match. It was me, Boss Man, and two of his friends against, I think, Combat Hammer and you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, three of his guys. And then, like, I think Green Team was somebody else. And it was a pretty sweaty chaos match because the total score after 15 minutes was 0, 20, and 40. That was it. <laughs> and the only reason why... I think we had 20 because I picked up the ball by accident. It just spawned on me. And then what did I do? I said, well, F this. I just jumped off the cliff. And then, <laughs> and then uh, we were back in the fight. And that, that, was, that was about it. That was the end of the, uh, you know, actually carrying the ball type of thing. But otherwise, it was just straight on, you know, 4v4v4, like super sweaty. Not a lot of people were dying, but it was pretty intense fights all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. So if we look at it from the top down PVP, that's what the highest MMR is. It's really solid four man groups running around and colliding with other four man groups. And they could care less for the most part what the objective is. They're there for the fight. OK. And then as we go to the next tier down, which is mid level battlegrounds and stuff, this is kind of the melting pot where you have people that are just now dipping their toes into mid-level from casual PvP or and their MMR kind of dictates that they're in this bracket now. And then you have other people at the higher end of that mid-level tier that are working towards high MMR. Um, and they're starting to realize that they're just there for the fight. They've started to become good whenever they have a 1v1, they win it. And they realize when I have a 1v2 or a 1v4 or 1v8, I have an opportunity to win most fights as long as performance is working. You know, the game is working. I have an opportunity to win most fights. And that's exciting to them. They realize I am getting better at PvP. And so that's what we experience a lot. So this person that, that wrote that, I thought it would be worth... I'm not trying to blast, put them on blast or anything like that. But this is... I tell you, I will read you my response to this, and it, you might think I'm a dick for this, but I said, this is the part where you cry because you can't get your daily battleground quest complete. Go ahead. We will wait. And some people might be like, ooh, that's a dick thing to say or whatever, but this is the type of person that will come and say, I'm tired of sucking at battlegrounds. I'm tired of sucking at PvP. Can you help me? And I say, yes. Stop playing the objectives, okay? Start focusing on these things. I'm going to give you a checklist when you go into Battlegrounds. And then I'll jump into Discord with them. We'll do a live stream and we'll coach them live. And they love it. You know, I have people that are like, I just had my best Battleground ever, 15 and 3. You know, we didn't win the match, but I feel infinitely better about Battlegrounds now. Infinitely better about PvP. I can hold my own. I can... I can actually carry a team now. I can carry people. And so, um, anyways, I thought that was an interesting topic. If you guys should post your thoughts on it below, I'm interested to see what other people have to say about that level of understanding about Battlegrounds to get better at PvP. And I see you've been pretty busy in high-level MMRs, and that's pretty much been your experience is, like, everybody's there for the fight. <laughs> Nobody's there to pick up the Chaos Ball and run around with it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a it's certainly a different playstyle and stuff, but equally, I it, it only sucks when like say if I do a queue with boss man or something, and then we wind up in you know those top, you know like a high bracket or whatever. But then the other team, you know, they're gelling more as a four man squad compared to us because it's, you know it's just the two of us do a queue. So in those moments, it sucks because we can only do so much. 
and you know you can't you can only hang on for so long when four people are banging on you the whole time and yeah. you know it's purple versus green and the orange team is just doing the objective so you know we're 2 v 4 you know uh you know two good players against four good players you're not going to survive you're not going to survive you know forever that's just that's just not how it works because you know four good players know how to focus know how to priori- prioritize and everything and there's only so much you can do so yeah and you know some people will be like well it's just a matter of time before you make it to high mmr you know it's so many different battlegrounds well nobody knows what the mmr is right now but i can tell you i've i've played since beta and i've done a lot of battlegrounds a lot (laughs) a lot and (laughs) it the equation is not as simple as just time spent playing the game you know there's a degrade to the mmr if you circle back around to play a specific character or a character and there should be too you shouldn't not play this character for three months you know left this character at super high mmr went to play other different characters builds play styles whatever and then three months later come back to this guy and you're still at the same mmr that wouldn't be fair to you right you haven't played this thing for like three months. The meta has probably changed, armor, everything else. You can't be expected to produce at that high level anymore. And so that's a thing, 100%. And if anybody says otherwise, they're not telling you the truth because I live it. I experience it. Um, but Yeah, I, I think but, League of Legends, they have a system like that where every year they reset the bracket. And once you do ranked... Q, if you don't play for about a month, you actually drop a ranking. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have to actually play. All you gotta do is play one match a month to maintain your to maintain your level or wherever you are in that standing, and then you're fine. But if you yeah. if you don't play for if you don't play rank for thirty days, then you will drop a level. Okay, yeah. and when if you do play that one match you better not lose <laughs> okay because now you're just going further back anyway so you know yeah. it's it's kind of an interesting I, I like the way they do it and i might be referencing something back from like 2015 or 16 something like that but yeah it would be cool if say you haven't touched storm atronach in five six months then yeah his his mmr rating should decrease because of that inactivity in bgs yeah yeah that'd be the smart thing to do that's that's what i'm experiencing right now is by the time i circle back around to start working on a build their mmr is lower and which is is great because i'm testing a build i i don't want to be thrown in the sweaty you know deep end of the pool with a bunch of murderers that are running min max builds meta builds that's not a fun environment you know so give me a chance to throw on this new gear go test it um because the majority of people hang out in the mid-level mmrs anyways the majority of people that are like approaching me wanting to pvp training that's where they're at like and that mid-level can be a pretty broad you know range but they're below mid mid level mmr is going to be just casuals and that's probably the person that left that comment it's just somebody that goes to do their daily and they get mad because they can never win their daily and they're looking for someone to blame it on well it's got to be this streamer because he's out there going 18 and 1 but we lost the game and i have to do another battleground because of him you know and it never occurs to them that you have to do another battleground because of you not because of me you have to do another battleground because of you yeah that that lack of accountability is that what they call it lack of accountability and somebody will say well that's you not claiming accountability for it no i fully admit what i'm doing (laughs) i'm not playing the objective (laughs) rarely do i do now sometimes i do play the objective a little bit not too much you know sometimes and then there are times where you know i go 100 percent, and i'm like we're gonna win this game no matter what and i think those are some of the sweetest victories but i don't know it's just an interesting observation i get some of the most interesting uh comments so 
Isn't that what Nephis was saying last week? Like, we could just blame him. Oh, yeah. Nephis, man. What are you doing? What are you doing, Nephis? You should have won that game for that person. <laughs> I know you weren't even in there. You should have won, <laughs> won that game. Hey, everybody should go check out Nephis's channel, too. He just had a big announcement, and he's got a lot of uh, really cool stuff coming around the corner. So, Yeah, I think it's crazy that... You know, whatever sort of experience you have in the game, then you just kind of you just go ahead and blame somebody else, hundreds, thousands of miles away, you know, for your problems. Yeah. Oh man, the world is such a fascinating place. Yeah, you know that kind of along the same lines of, I saw a content creator that said, "Is ESO toxic?" You know. When I think about it, it's not so much – it's our culture, right? It's, so when, so that question, is ESO toxic? Is he talking about like the game toxic or like the community toxic? The community. Okay. Yeah. Is the community toxic? And I'm like, you. I was thinking about it because immediately I could say yes, but then I look around at people that are helpful and trying to make a positive impact in the game, and there's there's a lot of those. Um, it depends on where you spend the majority of your time and the closer you gravitate to the PVP side of things, I think the toxicity increases, right? Because there's a lot of chest pounders, you know, people that try and flex and think they're God's gift to PVP and whatever it is, you know, and, but it's a cultural problem. It's a, um, where we're at in today's day and age is there's a lot of young kids and when i say young kids they could be in their mid they could be in their 20s to late 20s um <laughs> because you know i'm an older guy but i see this all the way up until 30s you know but they feel like they can talk to anyone any way they want online and there's no repercussions for it because for the most part there was really not Right. And that's kind of the problem, not just with ESO, but that's the problem with a lot of online MMOs and a lot of as soon as you have a high population density, the toxicity increases because there's more and more people, more and more kids that think that they can talk to whoever they want, like go kill yourself. You know, that's a common Jeez. thing. That's a common thing that kids will message people, go kill yourself. You know, like who who says that? go kill yourself you know that's a kid that has not been exposed to the to the real world in real life because they wouldn't be telling people to go kill themselves if they were exposed to suicide in their life if they were exposed to actual real loss and real death in their life they wouldn't be freely saying stuff like that so not to get too deep with it but that's what we experience in eso the toxicity is because young dumb kids and uh, pointing fingers at all the young dumb kids, but and they just th think they can say whatever they want, and there's no repercussions. So and some of these people are probably adults too, and we've got a uh, toxic thread in our Discord where we've got some really, really heinous, like just absolutely absurd comments that were posted there from people. So it's it's not an ESO exclusive to ESO. It's where we're at as a species species so damn that was pretty uh pretty deep or dark <laughs> yeah we haven't even talked about our main overpowered topic today yeah do we want to talk about it do we want to just end it here and be like all right lighthearted episode just talk just going <laughs> off the wall with anecdotes and whatever well i guess we keep going right we let's still, pick we're, we're, we're only 45 minutes in we're only 45 minutes in. Let's just pick. Let's just fly. Let's fly. Fly through the rest. All uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, or, or let's well, talk about the hybrid meta that's coming and we'll save what we had planned today for the next episode. Hmm. Will it even be relevant? Yeah, because we'll kind of already miss the. This is where I'm not editing any of this out. It's like we're planning the <laughs> the next episode and deciding whether or not we want to keep doing this one. Hmm. Uh, do we want to talk about the hybrid now? Uh, we could. I mean, the stuff that we're going to talk about, we're just going to lightly go over a couple of these things. So it, it should be yeah. relatively quick anyway. Let's, let's talk about that broken armor set. <laughs> let's do it. 
All right, so the first one on the chopping block that was introduced on the PTS patch notes, which are we going to provide a link in the description for anybody that hasn't seen it yet? Sure. All right, I guess we're going to do that. Of the patch notes? Yeah, the patch notes. Yeah, I can send it to you, yeah. Rim, if you don't have it. Yeah. So I think it's called, so one of the sets, medium armor set, Rush of Agony. It has a line of stamina recovery, weapon and spell damage, and offensive penetration because they're trying to steer clear from separating physical and spell pen. They're just, you know, part of that hybrid meta that we just briefly mentioned. They're trying to standardize everything. Mm -hmm. And so penetration or, you know, that weapon and spell is just going to be offensive pen. And the fifth line is when you deal direct damage with a gap closer, blink, charge, leap, teleport, or pull ability, you will pull enemies within 10 meters to you. After two seconds, deal physical damage to all enemies within seven meters. This effect can occur once every eight seconds and scales off your weapon or spell damage. The pull will not apply crowd control immunity to the target. And there is a developer comment that said, we expect to see a lot of power from the set with its ability to pull enemies without applying crowd control. In early internal playtesting, we experimented both with and without CC immunity application. And with it, the pull from this set felt challenging to engage with as your goal was to keep everyone clumped up for a prolonged period of time for the boom. Boom. But you couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Inside joke. With no CC immunity application, we hope <laughs> there is both enough time to get out before you get hit with a big stun like Dawnbreaker or Dawnbreaker of Smiting, the Donnie, and the explosion from the set, and enough room to try and deny your opponent to do that. Note that this set's pull will still respect CC immunity and not pull targets who are immune to CC. So, I think... So yeah, I guess from what they were just saying, they want you to, like say you're on a DK, right? And then you have this set on, say I put it on my center, right? I gap close with shield assault, people get pulled in, now I can hit him with a choking talons and wait for Sawman UK to drop the bomb. Yeah. And it is, it's a wrap at that point. So yeah. what do you think, Grim? I think it'll be awesome if they make it to where Dawnbreakers hit their targets and you can use Dragon Leap again. <laughs> well, it, well. So it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Serious note, because I think there was a, oh, you know how they do like stealth fixes or adjustments, whatever. Yeah. So I think Dawnbreaker was actually yeah. meant to be like a Sigic Order ability because it kind of just tran versus tran tran transverses transcends uh, transcends space and time because <laughs> you know i know from papa's experience right like he'll hit his donny but then two weeks later some guy in the eu gets hit with it so yeah that, yeah and that... it makes it it makes a malcolm 1vx video malcolm's out there doing his like 1vx's and papa's dawn breakers are wrecking people <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh yeah it'll be interesting i i think i might use it i don't like the offensive pen because you know, I run it on an actual. I would run this on my tank, but yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. The there's a bunch of sets, but we're just gonna go over the ones that we found interesting. The second one is Grizzly Gourmet Medium Armor Set. It's got a line of max stamina, weapon and spell damage, offensive pen, and then there are two five line bonuses. One is 500 max stamina, so half of what you would normally get, and the second bonus is. Dealing light attack damage grants you a stack of Baker's Delight for five seconds. When you gain three stacks, you create a sweet roll next to your target for five seconds. If you or an ally touches the sweet roll, both you and your ally gain one of the following effects. Restore resources, so you'll get, 50, you get 1,600 health, magicka, and stamina back. Empower for, for 10 seconds, which will increase the damage of your light attacks. Or major force for 10 seconds, which increases your crit damage by X amount, we'll say, because I don't know the actual number. 20% is it? Uh, I thought it was 16. Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, whatever it is. Major force. It increases your crit damage. That's what you need to know. And this can occur every two seconds. Now, I guess if when you look at the stats, uh, max stamina, weapon spell, offensive pen, max stam, <sighs> I mean, it's a mini armor set. I know we were talking about it earlier, but I think I, I could run this on my supports 
with without having any issues. And yeah, I mean the resources back is great. More light attack damage, great. The crit damage. Is it official that crit damage or you know major force does that increase crit healing as well? Like the thickness of your heals? I have no clue. <laughs> I get, I'd have to look that up. Have your assistant look it up. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen Veronica in months. Oh, but, Veronica. But we'll get her back one of these days. Because <laughs> hmm. I feel like that's kind of the the shift of where they're going to. You know, with things yeah. like if it, if it increases your crit damage, it'll also increase your crit healing. That type of thing. We know with the penetration going to offensive pen instead of weapon and, uh, weapon and spell that type yeah. of stuff. So. Yeah, I have to look at it and see if Major Force actually does that because if it does, then uh, yeah, I could easily benefit from all of these things. And it, it would kind of act like what's that other set? Um, the one that Papa was going for a couple of weeks ago from Imperial um, City. Imperial City. Oh, why can't I think of it? It's a really good set. Yeah, the one that drops but, that orb or something, that little green. Yeah, you pick that up, and the stat return and health on that is super nice. Um, I don't know why I can't think of that right now. I was just thinking of something else, but because it's spell power cure, Imperium, and then that's where you insert the set. Yeah, Veronica would be able to look it up. Hey, what is it called? I can't think of it right now. I was thinking about other things. I know Baker of Cakes. He uses it. Yeah. Yeah, man, are we gonna just like pause the podcast right now just to try and think about what the set is? Nah, we'll remember when we come across it. Yep, all right. And the last set I think that we're gonna go over is so you're gonna actually be able to get this from Rewards of Rewards for the Worthy, and it is called Dark Convergence Light Armor Set. It's got a line of Max Magica. Offensive penetration and spell, weapon and spell damage. And the fifth line, casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground will create an area that applies a 30% snare and pulls enemies every two seconds after a 0.5 second delay and then and stun them for one second. After four seconds, the area deals magic damage to all, all enemies in the area and additional magic damage to enemies within three meters of the center. Increasing all damage by 10% for each target. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds and scales off your what higher of weapon or spell damage. I think, Grim, you have a, a lot to say about this set. This one uh, gives you a lot of, uh, what, what do the Italians say? Is it like Ajita? Like, ma, you give me Ajita. Something like that. Seems balanced to me. Next set. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's twenty. It's a twenty-second cooldown, so it's not like you can just spam it every time you throw caltrops. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, there's a problem with an armor set when is there no one else posts a uh, message on his community board for you on YouTube, and he says, "Hey, closing on a house won't be available for a couple days." Um, you know. Check in with these other content creators for content uh, while we get this house closed on. Okay. Then the patch notes come out and he does a video immediately. Holy crap. I know I said I wasn't going to do a video, but what's going on here? And this was one of the sets that he was pointing out was going to be problematic. And I, I agree. In a PvP setting, this will be problematic. Um, I will run it on build and be just ultra annoying. Like, they won't want to stand and fight me, and they'll try and leave, and they can't leave because they're getting pulled back or they're snared. And so, very interesting. Um, and I think that's probably the purpose of it, right? Sounds like they know full well what they're doing. There was a lot of humor in these patch notes, by the way, like the ha-ha, you know, um, power, of, power of the light go boom. You know, there was a lot of humor in there. I think they know full well what they're doing with some of these armor sets and stuff like that. And they're trying to address ball groups and group metas and things like that. So, yeah, I forgot to mention that there was a developer comment that said this set was designed with one goal in mind kill large groups. Mm -hmm. Pesky Zerg sitting on your keep or resource flag, send them to the void by pairing the set with some hard CC and immobilizes. Yeah. So that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe something will stop those ball groups. 
Yeah, it's so interesting with the legitimate ball groups too. Like if if you look at their front and back bar, every person in that ball group is running like offensively they're running abilities that if they got peeled off by themselves and they had to fight you 1v1 they couldn't right they could fight you but they're not going to win it's not a dueling build it's not a it's made for ball group and synergizing with everyone else in the group and surviving and dying with that entire group on you know around you and so that's interesting but um i don't know I'm going to make some builds with that video, or I'm going to make some videos with that build for sure. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> the So I guess with the ball group stuff, yeah, you are right, because I kind of, I know I was, this past week I was running in a ball group, finally, for once in my life, and it was kind of interesting to see how they work with everybody's running proc stat, and everyone's got certain abilities and stuff, where it, it's kind of like, we're all part of this piece of a car and you're the muffler. You're these, you know, you guys are the four tires. Uh, you guys are the air conditioner. You guys are the steering wheel, you know, whatever, all these different components. You miss one of these components. It's going to affect the ball group in some sort of way. That's not going to help the situation. So mm -hmm. yeah, you are right where, yeah, if, if that piece is solo, then you're going to get boned and not in the good way. So, yeah. but then, See Equally, I think back to a year ago when, you know, running with Torva and stuff from the Mid-Year Mayhem. Yeah, it's July. So, yeah, last year's Mid-Year Mayhem in, like, June, July 2020, where, yeah, we're just, like, you know, a massive group of, like, all good players, like Warpig and yeah. JR Dude and Shadow and stuff. And, yeah, if we get singled out, whatever, we're fine. Yeah. You know, Isn't that get, the difference? That's yeah. the major difference between a ball group. And and that's another thing that I run into. We're not calling th these guys out, by the way, but it's just a we're expanding everyone's understanding here. But a lot of people that jump into legitimate ball groups are told what abilities to run, what gear set to run and when to use those abilities don't really learn how to PVP. And they'll have some levels of success as a group the second they get peeled off they die you could take jr and jr will be in a room the next room over fighting five people by himself and killing them you know war pig will be killing 10 people in the other room and torv is over here killing five by himself now you put those guys together in one room moving in the same direction and that's trouble that's kind of how i viewed the eso expendables this last mid-year mayhem with the other content creators you know, individually, these guys can all hang outnumbered by themselves. You put them all in a group together and move in the same direction, and it's trouble. So, yeah, and I I wouldn't necessarily say that you know running in a ball group like they are bad players because it's more so that like say yeah like me and Ugrim right yeah we you know we can function individually no problem but we're just gonna try a different play style where okay yeah. I am going to sacrifice my individuality and do this for the team so now the abilities and sets or whatever that would allow me to you know one-on-one -on, -one on a normal basis i'm sacrificing that for the benefit of the clan right yeah. if so, it happens in that order right but for most people if they go from casual pvp or to ball group they never go through the maturation process Right, right. And and then they'll find themselves three, four years later and still not good at PvP, always dying when they're solo or by themselves, right, or outnumbered. So that that's the difference if you go through your steps, through your maturation process, and then make the adjustments to run as a ball group. You're, It's different, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So I think those are just the main three sets that we cared about. Oh, and Veronica, she came out of retirement and <laughs> Essence Thief. That's what it was. Essence Thief. Jeez, I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Yeah, that yeah, is dude. a really, well, really strong set. So that would actually be kind of fun with um, – I guess it would be like more – interactive play style right like i'm yeah pvp is already as interactive as it's gonna get but 
having objectives and stuff to do in the game where while you're fighting somebody, oh, look, a sweet roll. Let me go pick that up and get this some bonus. Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, you should make a uh, baker that uses the baker's or the chef's hat and the uh, the chef's apron. Are, are those costumes and stuff in the game? They are, yeah. I saw somebody running around that looked like Mario. From- <laughs> 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 yeah you can oh okay yeah, yeah there's could, a chef hat and a chef apron in the game oh okay yeah no i could certainly do that you know with like a <laughs> thematic uh type uh, play style whatever yep. yeah no, that certainly can be uh be completed hey i wonder if you put uh is it grave digger that craftable set you put grave digger with uh essence thief like i don't know uh, i i not- think you honestly i think you, we spoke about this a yeah. year ago and you were playing around the idea but it just wound up being trash or something well damage wasn't at the time where it is now like you can just get weapon da- you don't even have to try and get weapon and spell damage and you can get it right with the cp changes and just where the mm-hmm. game's at so damage is so much easier to come by it might be worth revisiting so of course you'll spend half your time while you're fighting somebody running over here to get the green orb and running over here to pick the <laughs> the cross up and I don't know. Anyway, I think it was Grave State Collector, right? Grave State Collector. I said Grave Digger. Yeah, Veronica's on point, man. Enemies, Shoot. enemies you drop or oh, blah, blah. Enemies you damage drop a Grave Stake for six point one seconds after they die. When you touch the Grave Stake, restore re- uh, you know four four thousand. 4,500 stamina magicka, only one grave stake can appear at a time. So that would be a, it would be a, I guess a fun build, right? Where, say I'm running, big, uh, I want to I want to keep saying Baker's Delight, Grizzly Gourmet, and then yeah. you're running Grave Stake Collector and Essence Thief. So now <laughs> constantly there are things for you to interact with, all these little waypoints or something in a BG or whatever that are going to benefit you with some ridiculous level. It's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> constantly, constantly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, sounds like a little fun mini game as well. Yep. Okay, hey, so I think... Speaking oh, of mini games, we need to get Sawman UK and and uh, um, Captain Crunch, and we need to get um, Dr. Gankenstein. We need to get some... Assault, um, Fragman Saul, we need to get the content creators together and do a manhunt in the Imperial City districts. Play that game. Yeah, I think it'd be fun if Sawman UK was the bait because, <laughs> yeah, we're looking for him, but he's also going to be bombing us. So yeah. I think he that'd would be, be kind sit- of fun. He'd be sitting down in base just laughing, making a video while we're up in the districts looking for him. And he's like, You're really close. I can see you. <laughs> oh, I see you almost had me. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like on the toilet, you know, not even looking. <laughs> right. Yeah. Doggo would be like, you almost got him. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think that, that I think that finally covers the sets. Just a couple ones that we wanted to go over. So just for some, now I guess we'll go over a couple of the random changes that they're doing throughout the or that they're going to bring in the next patch update. So they updated Break Free to follow a more consistent cost rule when compared to other abilities. This will reduce situations where it could desync your stamina bar when using, don't get triggered, Grim, as well as improving the <laughs> response time and validating if you have enough resources to cast it. Many bonuses that reduce its cost have also been changed to be handled naturally by the server rather than as a as an ability to speed up the validation in cases where you are using many of them. What is your hot take on this, Grim? Awesome. Uh, are you looking forward to it? Because I know, I know, I hear this from you almost religiously. Mm-hmm. Can't break free. Can't break full free. resources. I have 80% stamina. I'm looking at it right now, and I can't break free. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I hope it sounds like this has the potential to address those things. So anything that's going to help improve the game, I'm all mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Yeah. I think once they figure out what these things are that are desyncing people and, you know, like 
I can tell you right now, take flight or leap. Leap's a problem when it does go off and it hits, it causes problems. It causes problems with desyncs, it causes problems with whatever, but it's resetting a character's position, right? The knockback or the stun, it has something to do with that. The re the repositioning of the assets or the characters. It has something to do with that because Flame Clinch does the same thing. Magnum Shot does the same thing. And then the other things that are doing it, it would be like a, uh, a lethal arrow that stuns you or overload is causing that problem too. But most of them are things that reposition your character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next one, they fixed multiple issues with ability bar timers displaying incorrect durations. So I think this sounds like they they are this is or this might pertain to things like ground tar, or um, ground abilities like wall of elements, where when you cast it, yeah, it shows a timer, but then when you bar swap, it will remove the timer. So now you have no idea what the remaining duration is. Yeah. And I'm hoping that'll fix it because I've since then removed the action duration reminder timer add-on in, in um, you know, so I can use the one that's part of the game because the less add-ons I can run, the better. And it also kind of helps my game run a little bit more smoother. So, yeah. I don't know. I did the vampire quest with Fragman yesterday. And they need to look at whatever's going on with your timers. You know how they changed the vampire quest to where your action bar is all the vampire abilities. And it kind of does a little tutorial teaching how to use the abilities or what the effect is. Mm -hmm. It's like 76,000 76, hours is the cooldown on each one of those abilities. <laughs> so. Oh, that must be like a UI thing then. Yeah, yeah, Just there's like something going on there. Yeah, I'm not sure if anybody reported or not, but that might be interesting. Also, yeah. I noticed during the tutorial, yeah, you have your five abilities and then your ultimate, right? Mm -hmm. The tutorial only teaches you to use three of those abilities and then your ultimate, I think. So yeah, the other yeah. two, it doesn't even go over, which yep. I don't know why they would have skimped out on it. So it, Yeah, Miss Forms, yeah. one of them, and then what was the other one? Uh, um... Oh, it's funny that you say misform because <laughs> everybody uses misform, and that's the one ability they don't teach you how to use. <laughs> so right. the tutorial probably is like, hey, these abilities are pretty cool. Let's use those. Meanwhile, the ones they don't include in the tutorial are the only ones that you do wind up using long term. Yeah, that's funny. That's a good observation. <laughs> oh, Zoss. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yep. Okay, stealth. Adjusted many player abilities to no longer attempt to remove stealth or invisibility when they should not. This is also expanded to any damage over time effect rather than only single target damage over time effects as we want the removal and denial of stealth and invisibility to be more active rather than passive. This means that the only player abilities that should remove stealth are area of effect, direct damage, stuns, fears or immobilizers as well as reveals attacks made with detection potions with yeah uh, attacks made with detection potions active may still damage the target but will not strip their stealth or invisibility also fixed many issues where attacks that were checking in areas regularly to hit single singular targets could target stealth or invisible targets such as force pulse or shrouded daggers bouncing attacks any attack that checks in an area to attack singular targets will no longer attempt to even apply to target under these effects. And then uh, the developer comment, the main goals with these adjustments were to improve the consistency and reliability of things like Shadow Cloak, while also stamping out more deliberate rules on what should counter the effects. Currently, the effects have a lot of frustrating counters, mainly ones that feel like the attacker is getting for free uh, getting for free on attacks they'd be naturally regard uh, they'd be using naturally regardless 
such as pulsing AOE dots, making it relatively easy to deny stealth and invisibility when you know how. While we did spend a lot of time helping these effects feel more reliable, we also buffed many of the more deliberate sources of stealth and invisibility denial to make counteracting them feel better in general and to better reward going out of your way to utilize them. So I'm all for this. I like the standardization. And I guess I'll just touch on this one real quick. I'll throw Major Light in there. Uh, this ability and the inner light morph now reveal hidden enemies within eight meters, up from six, and all versions of this ability now check for hidden enemies every 0.5 seconds instead of every one second for more response responsive catching of those slippery targets. This also includes the Major Savagery buff as well, very similar change. So I like this a lot because I I can notoriously catch uh, why I even started the sentence like that. Whenever I come across a Nightblade, I always have Major Light on my bar. So when I cast Major Light, I can almost guarantee that I'm going to catch them. But having that 0.5 refreshing second to reveal, oh man, it's going to make life so much easier. Because sometimes I, I get the impression that, yeah, I'm on top of this guy, but... Am I really? Like, <laughs> am I really? Because of that that one second uh, difference that yeah. they're getting or something because it's not checking. I didn't even know it checked like that. I thought it was just constantly active all the time. But that kind of at least gives me more of an idea how this ability actually works. So the fact that it's getting a a quicker refresh time, I, I like it. I love it. What Are you, you gonna go from uh, Mage Light to Revealing Flare since you're gonna get thirty percent? Uh, damage uh, reduction just for having it slotted. So, Revealing Flare, this ability and its morphs now passively grant major protection, which is 10% damage mitigation, while slotted to ensure that they do not feel lackluster to slot when not actively trying to deny stealth or invisibility. Uh, and this is in attempt to bring it in lines with Mage Light or Expert Hunter, which give major prophecy for Mage Light and major savagery for expert hunter so i like this change that they're doing to it and mm, i wouldn't be opposed to double barring this right uh, it would be pretty neat having 10 percent more damage mitigation yeah i could especially on especially on yennefer yeah i could run a build that i could do chewed ons and let's see, I could do Mighty Chudons with Vampire Cloak, the one that gives you minor protection up at all times. And then I could double bar this. So now I've got Major Resolve up at all times, minor minor and major protection up at all times. And, and yeah. run the Swift and run the uh, Ghost that gives you 10% damage mitigation. Uh, Yes, yeah, Spare Guardian. Yeah. Yeah. And Buffer the Swift is what? 10%? 20%? 10 percent yes. For all yeah. player source attacks. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little <laughs> bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you take no damage. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to just trying it out and see how much more, uh, how much less damage I take. So. Yeah, and isn't there stuff in the CP that you could do too? Damage mitigation when you have a negative effect on you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that the one that does. Wait, um, say that one more time. You said when you... So when you oh, have yeah. a negative effect on you, is it Juggernaut? Or that's when you're on CC immunity. Yeah, when you break free, you get you get damage 10% damage, damage mitigation um, after you break free, or, you know, during yeah. that CC immunity. And then, yeah, the status effect one that you're talking about, yeah. It does something. I'm not sure what it, what, what it is, right. though. Is it the new CP? One of the new CPs that gives you damage mitigation? Uh, the one that they're introducing? Yeah. Really? I thought there was because I know the one. There's one in the game that's just it's not a slottable. It's just a regular passive that mm -hmm. will, when you have a bunch of debuffs on you, you get some little extra bonus, if you will. Yeah. And I know that there's. 
that the uh, it's not like it's additive versus multiplicative. So, it, you know, you can't just add them all up 10% here, 10% there, 10%. Now I'm at 70% damage mitigation. Didn't Overpowered. Work. Overpowered. Yeah, it doesn't work that way, but it's still a heck of a lot of damage mitigation. So, yeah. oh, and you're getting another 10% damage mitigation with the change to the passive, the PvP passive. Mm. Battle Spirit. Battle Spirit, your damage received now is going from, what, 55 to 45%? Damage mitigation, it's going from the other way around. Yeah, so from 44% to 55%. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so there's 10% more damage mitigation right there. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do the champion points real quick. So they're introducing three so um, three new sub-constellations, and then within those sub-constellations, I have three more, three slotable passives each. And for the one that we're talking about, um, I'll read all three. Sustained by suffering increases your health, magic, and stamina recovery by 30 per stage while under the effects of a negative effect. Pain's Refuge reduces your damage taken by 1% per negative effect on you up to a maximum of 20%. And then Relentless gain major protection for 3 seconds after being stunned or feared. Well, at least we know this wouldn't work in BGs. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's interesting. I see some content creators that are like tank meta incoming, and then some content creators are like hybrid meta incoming. And uh, I think nobody really, everyone has an idea, but nobody really knows until even now we could jump on the PTS, and the, but the PTS isn't going to give, you can't test things properly on the PTS because the first thing is if you've ever done the PTS, you log in and there's a bunch of people standing around trying on different armor, different gear sets, and just looking through to see what the stats are on things. And then once somebody is there to test a specific whatever, whatever, you just run like five feet and there's like a handful of people there to duel, you know, and everyone is running the most meta broken whatever. Like nobody's running some you're not there to test the crap builds and the crap armor that, you know, got a little change to it for the most part. Some people say they are, but everyone wants to find the most broken, overpowered, overpowered thing, you know. And so everybody that's dueling, that's what they're wearing, the most broken, overpowered stuff. So anyways, that's my rant. Thank you for the rant, Grim. We do appreciate that. Yay! I got nothing else to add there. So, want to keep trucking along? Yep. So, the Templar getting a... One of the changes is to the Dawn's Wrath class tree. Backlash, this ability in its morph in its morphs now retain 50% of the damage you dealt to the target up from 20% to help be more reliable in PvP encounters. The final explosion now scales off your spell or weapon damage, depending on the morph, rather than magicka or stamina. The final explosion now also scales with both positive and negative bonuses, rather than only negative ones. Ha ha, backlash, go, boom. Hmm? What do you think, Graham? I know you, when we were talking about it earlier, you were like, the green arrows coming back. Yeah, that's going to help Green Arrow's damage output. If my Green Arrow is a Bobo Templar, Stamplar, so Green Arrow is going to have some real good pop. Um, on that note, they need to adjust the bow damage. A golden Nern honed bow should be the same damage as a golden Nern honed mace from a damage per damage number. You know, I know that two hand maces give you pen. I'm not talking about that. Um, well, maybe I am. Bows don't have passives that work similar to that, right? And a bow passive is like with each consecutive light attack, you gain weapon five percent weapon damage. It's like I'm trying to kill people here. Who has time to just light attack, light attack, light attack? Look out! My weapon damage is now equivalent to if I just had a two hander and jabbed you one time. <laughs> you know, like 
they need to address the uh, bow damage. Both of them take up two slots. You know, a bow is considered a two-hand, you know, the same as a staff and the same as a two-hander. So it, the damage needs to be equivalent. But anyways, green arrow with the um, power of the light go boom. That's going to be awesome. I, I will, oh, go ahead. I, I think, didn't they, we were talking about this earlier, Crushing Shock, or they're adding Major Breach to Crushing Shock? Oh, hold on, Grim. we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so if they did that, when we get there, if that's what we find out to be true, let's look at the Green Arrow tool Toolkit. Lethal Arrow that applies Major... Um, Is that Minor Breach? Oh, I, no, no, Lethal, yes, yeah. Snipe does yeah. the, the Minor, yeah. Yeah, Lethal Arrow will do Major... Defile and Power of the Light does minor breach and crushing weapon will do major breach. So I'll have access to major and minor breach and major defile on that primary toolkit. And then on the back bar, I could run like a sheer venom poison inject or a master's bow for even more weapon damage or whatever. Um, so you hit him with the master's bow for a weapon damage buff. And maybe you're running back bar powerful assault. Hint, hint, that's going to be probably the build. But uh, you'll hit your vigor and your um, master's bow, and there's like a thousand weapon damage, and you'll go to your front bar and uh, go to town on people. It's going to be awesome. Just wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> and what was I just going to say? Oh, so to your light attack comment with the <laughs> bow stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember that PvP is one aspect of the game, and PVE is another aspect of the game. And yeah. when you're parsing and stuff, light attacks surprisingly probably uh, I'll just approximate it, say some kind of close number. You know, light attacks come out to like thirty or forty percent of your damage. Yeah. Yeah. So in that in the in that respect, where your light attacks, I think what'd you say? Uh, each light attack increases your weapon damage by five percent. Yeah, whatever, whatever that number is. In PvE, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So that's my counter to your and statement. I wonder in the trials, you run more trials than me. I don't know how recently, but how many people are parsing or running bow builds? Bows consistently are always a back bar, like get your Endless Hail or your Volley or whatever going. Get your poison injection going reapply your buffs and then go to your front bar for your primary spammable i don't know that there's anybody parsing with actually with bow on the main bar right i honestly i think it would just come down to the person because say i'm running a like uh, a stamp sork right a dual wield stamp sork mm -hmm. and all right i'm a melee melee is my primary but say we already have four people that signed up to do, you know, uh, took up the four melee spots, so we need four ranged. Well, I can easily just switch to my bow, and I already got a build. Uh, you know, you can still run the same build, but now I'm just doing it with a bow instead, and I will be fine. Mm. And I think we, you know, with my with my core, like, you know, dungeon running group, I th you know, just, I think with like within the last week or two, there's a moment where our guys switched to range just for, like, just for one particular boss fight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for that moment, I think Emma was the one doing it. Yeah, he went from dual wheel to bow for that fight, and he was fine. Yeah, so Emma, Emma it, could do it. He's used to the bow play style, too, because he runs out on his Necro, Witcher, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And and honestly, I it really just comes down to, I guess, like your personality, right? Like, if you just like running bow bills, then yeah, you can parse with bow bills, no problem. But yeah. equally, a lot of people who do those high parses and stuff, they can adapt to whatever it is that they need, you know? So even if, say, you're... Like, even for regular Magicka users, they brought back the dual-wield Magicka uh, parsing now. So now, on certain fights, if you want to be melee, you can run a, a dual-wield for your setup if you really wanted to. Especially it, going I, in the next patch. Yeah, and it really just comes down to personal preference. You know, the damage is either going to be, like, up or down, just a few thousand, right? But, again, at the end of the day, you're still parsing leagues above majority of the community, so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, so that covers the Templar stuff. So, Sigic Order, yes, uh, the crushing weapon uh, will now apply Major Breach to the target hit for six seconds rather than healing for 25% of the damage caused. 
which is a nice change. And the other thing is deliberation. This passive no longer grants major protection, which is 10% damage mitigation, and will instead apply a unique 30% damage mitigation to get this passive's power back where it was meant to be. Good Lord Almighty. That's a lot, dude. That's like Iron Blood. 30, 33% damage mitigation. So now, when you're in that meditative state, you're going to be pretty pretty thick in those moments. You'll and, just stand there right in front of everybody and think about what you're... <laughs> think about the fighting that is going on around you. <laughs> dude, you could probably pair that with... Iron Blood? Iron Blood. So you get a 30%. And then another 30% on top of that. And then put your uh, Swift on there. And major protection on both bars. And minor protection. <laughs> oh, so Lord. <laughs> well, I see, we, we make these jokes now, but will it actually be viable? That's the, that's the thing we have to actually figure out. So I've got 90% damage mitigation. <laughs> I don't do any damage, but I got 90% damage. <laughs> <laughs> For the memes... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Templar, Sigic Order, Mage Light, Support. All right, I think that covers all that. The Champion Point System, we did cover one of the constellations that are being added to the fitness tree. The second one is Wind Chaser. Celerity increases movement speed by 2% per stage. That's nice. Thrill of the Hunt, whenever you kill an enemy, you gain Major Expedition for 3 seconds. That's pretty cool. Uh, isn't there a set that does that? I, mm -hmm. I feel like Drag, Drag King Slayer, doesn't that do that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, on Steve Rogers, I'm running that. and It's eight seconds of Major Expedition after you kill a target. So. Yeah, um, and the last one is Refreshing Stride. You gain 100 health and magic recovery per stage while sprinting. Nice changes. I like the Celerity one. I like more base movement speed. That one's pretty cool. And yeah. I did notice that you know they're not doing it all the time but a lot of the sets that we already have or mythics whatever you want to call it they're kind of making very small variations of them and putting them in the in the constellations or your cp yeah which which i guess is pretty cool i mean what do you think about that you think they're just running out of ideas and hey let's just let's just grab this and just give them a uh like a just some just a little bit of it no, I think they probably have it all planned out, and this is stuff they're going to keep implementing is ways, cool little things to really kind of niche your character, make them unique through CP. Yeah, yeah. And the last one is Walking Fortress. Bracing Anchor, increase your block mitigation by 4% per stage, but lowers your movement speed by 16% at all stages. Ooh. That kind of reminds me of that heavy armor skill. That's mm -hmm. um, when you it'll you'll get major resolve at the expense of being slow as molasses. Yeah. Well. So, um, oh, and you get CC immunity. Yeah. When you do it, yeah. Were you gonna add something or no? Well, the I, the armor set that. Um, Sawman's using iron blood or whatever that slows your movement speed by what sixty percent? Uh, yeah, some some extraordinary amount. Yeah. Yeah. So you put that on top of that CP, like you can't even move if you wanted to. <laughs> but you know, you will be an uh, in, was it uh, immovable object? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you pair that with that armor set that when you you put it on a Stamplar tank. And when they drop their cleansing ritual on the ground, or they drop um, um, Razor Caltrops, which applies Major Breach, and then that other armor set pulls snares. So Razor Caltrops snares people, right? And applies Major Breach. That armor set that we were talking about is going to apply its own snare and pull people to you. And then you have all that damage mitigation as well. Like, that's going to be some something fun to deal with. I think if you wanted to kill that guy who's that immovable object, you, I think you just throw a negate on him. Because yeah. he's he's literally a tower. <laughs> and he's sitting <laughs> in the gate. So now we just dump on him and he's done. 
I would kill him with kindness. I would kill him with boredom. I would just leave him be and go kill all his friends. <laughs> That's what I would do. Uh, yeah, this save them the gate for last just for him yeah make them watch yeah yeah and then we do uh i know our buddy imp likes to do those weak push-ups on people dude that, <laughs> that makes me laugh every time yeah and the last uh little uh slottable is soothing soothing shield when you successfully block an attack you have a 15 percent chance to restore health per stage, or 147 health per stage. Oh, I missed one. Ward Master, reducing your damage taken by 2% while blocking with the damage shield uh, per stage. Oh, no, that was weird. Redu oh, reduces your damage taken by 2% while blocking with the damage shield. Okay. Eh, not too bad, I guess, if you say you hit a uh, fragmented shield or whatever, and then, you know, block on a DK. Yeah. Give you a little bit more damage mitigation. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, the changes to some of the item sets. Some of them got full reworks. Some of them just had adjustments. We're just going to go over um, the ones that we kind of care about. So, Pelennial's Aptitude. Renamed this set to Pelennial's Wrath. This set now grants you a damage shield based on your weapon or spell damage and a stack of Wrath of White Strike for 10 seconds whenever you kill an enemy. Wrath of White Strike grants you up to 100 weapon and spell damage per stack, but causes you to take 1% of your max health as oblivion damage every second per stack up to 10 stacks. So I guess that would be 10% uh, of, of, um, of your max health every second. Good yeah, would we figure that out? It's like 3K, a 3K dot on yourself? Yeah, if, you're, if you have 30K health, You'll get 1,000 weapon and spell damage, but you'll be have you'll have a 3k dot on yourself, mm. self-inflicted, all of it. <laughs> and then uh, this sets two through four piece bonuses are now weapon and spell damage, offensive penetration, and weapon and spell damage, rather than the max health, stamina recovery, magic recovery, as well as this set no longer causes your weapon and spell damage to become the highest of the two values. So. I wonder this... if I can pair that with Thrasians, those two sets with Thrasians, because Thrasians is uh, max health, you know. But so that secondary set, if you're going to put Pelinels with a max health, probably what's the set that heals you and gives you major evasion? Heals you and gives you major evasion? And it has a bunch of max health in it. Yeah. So I would do Pelinels with that set, so that way I've got a hot coming in just from the armor set and major evasion, and Thrasians with Pelinels. So between Thrasians and Pelinels, like that's an extra twenty five hundred spell damage, <laughs> weapon damage. <laughs> Is it Grace of Gloom? Grace of Gloom. That's it. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna put that together. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can hit people for like 50k. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm reading the tooltip for Grace of Gloom, and it says it causing. Good? Yeah. Well, uh, health, uh, four percent healing receive and max health, and then when you take damage, you become a living shadow for ten seconds, causing you to heal for 900 every two seconds and getting major evasion yeah that's it actually the heal on it's a lot better than that it, when you put it on a like scaled character the mm. heal heal on it is a really respectable heal mm, okay yeah what about did you say you're gonna pair that with thracian as well yeah i'm gonna put um thracian because that's already that. minus 6k health oh yeah oh yeah so I guess if you're just memeing, then yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I, I mean, you're, I, you're the only person I know, Grim, that runs Thracian in PvP. So, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you, you, know, you got this work in to some extent. So, um, But to me, this, this sounds like it, it could be. It'd be better used in PvE. Uh, especially since, you know, we get healers and stuff. So that yeah. 3k dot is easily sustainable. Um, if you have like a PvE healer that isn't 
suffering from like the battle spirit passive. So, yeah. dude, that sounds like a build for um, Emperor Palpatine. Oh, right. wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold up. Wait a minute. Is the that damage mitigation? Does that if it's a self inflicted dot, does that get mitigated as well through that fifty five percent that you're getting? I guess so. It ends up only being a fifteen k dot. Oh, that's manageable. Fifteen fifteen hundred dot. Yeah. I could easily heal that in PvP, no problem. Yeah, and most people, hmm. I mean. Think of where weapon damage is at on builds. Like, there are builds right now that their vigor ticks are 4k on crit. No. They just have 4k healing coming in every second when they hit vigor. So. Yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Can't wait. Crusader, this set. So before, what Crusader used to do, uh, it was a medium or set from Volumfell. This set used to give a uh, increase your dodge chance window by 0.3 seconds, which I guess Grim, I know you used to like, you used to say it doubles your dodge window pretty much for the most part. Yeah. And what it now does is it grants you a damage shield based on your weapon and spell damage for six seconds and creates an area of effect beneath you for 10 seconds whenever you deal direct damage with a gap closer, blink, charge, leap, teleport, or pull ability. And then every two seconds, the area grants you and your group members inside minor courage for 12 seconds. And this can occur once every 20 seconds. The two through four piece are now weapon and spell damage. Uh, rather than max stamina, stamina recovery, and max stamina. Huh, so you're just getting weapon and spell damage three times over. Interesting. What, what do you think about the before to after change? Because I know you're I, honestly, Graham. I think you're again. You're the only person I know that runs Crusader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, other than the people that watch the video and they're like having um, a twice as long dodge roll, dodge window would be pretty darn, you know, helpful. I don't know. I mean, so it it's going from what I considered a purely defensive you know dodge roll you dodge roll with a bow to uh, gain major expedition and you're avoiding a lot of damage that's coming in whenever you're dodge rolling or you dodge roll to evade and it guarantees that you're going to evade that and whatever other crap was following up behind it to now i have a damage shield when i gap close and i just need to play differently with it now i will you know, and just burst on people and let them work through my shields and I'll get the minor courage, you know, while I'm doing that. So we'll see. I'll jump on the PTS and look at it too. I, I already did once, but I didn't take it out and play with it. Yeah, I think I could also run this on Senna as well because it seems a little bit like a support set too with mm -hmm. the, with that, I guess like aura that it puts on the floor where people can step in and get minor courage. So that'd be kind of yeah. cool. Now, is that aura considered a, an aura that would apply that one armor set that would pull people? The Dark Conversion? Yeah. Or Dark Convergence? Mm -hmm. um, maybe. Well, no, because it, it's... The way this is triggered is you have to do the gap closer. Mm -hmm. And I think that also would proc off of Dark Convergence as well. So doing a mm -hmm. Shield Assault would proc both of those sets. Yeah, or the Magic Gap Closer from Nightblade, or you could use um, the oh, Gap. Wait, yeah, I'm getting confused. So Dark Convergence, when you put a ground effect on the floor, you know, when you when you do a ground effect, then that will trigger the the black hole, right? And then mm. that would pull people in. But okay. that that's like an AOE thing. And I think this is saying when you deal direct damage with the uh, with a gap closer. So you gotcha. couldn't do um, it would this wouldn't proc off of a gear set. I don't think you'd have to do stampede, and then the dot AOE would yeah be on the ground, and that would pull people. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. All right. And I think the next set, uh, the Nicholas Heavy Armor, what it used to do was grant 25% chance on blocking spell projectiles to reflect them back to the attacker. And now it will grant a stack of Nicholas Resolve for five seconds whenever you successfully block, which after eight stacks, you consume them and completely avoid the next direct damage attack made against you within five seconds. Interesting. Yeah, I guess not really much, too much to say about that. You know, you know, maybe good for dueling, right? But that's pretty... Uh, I, 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 I bet duelers would get mad if you were wearing that set. Yeah. You know, it'd be like showing up to a dueling tournament with wearing lights of Meridia or whatever. So... Or Meridia's Blessing, or whatever that armor set is. That Oh, yeah, when you block, you dodge everything. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Blessed Armor. Blessed Armor. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sithis Touch. Uh, this set now grants 5% movement speed for 30 seconds whenever you kill an enemy up to 20 times. And grants invisibility for 3 seconds when activating. Uh, and the 2 through 4 piece are now Max Stam, Max Magicka, and then Weapon and Spell Damage as opposed to health, health, and critical chance. And this set no longer grants Major Berserk whenever you kill an enemy with the Blade of Woe. So that got a full redesign. That's kind of kind of neat. Yeah, it makes me wonder if you were a Magic Nightblade with a, uh, like a Flame Staff, Resto Staff, and you are cloaked, so you get the guaranteed crit from stealth, and then you wind up a heavy attack into your crushing shock whatever combo and then you nuke somebody does that armor set just automatically stealth you at the end of it and you get a movement speed bonus hmm. possibly and i was just thinking you could probably pair this on your steve rogers right yeah sure it you know we'll forget the thematics but dread king slayer and this set yeah. So now when you kill somebody, you'll get major expedition and you'll get five percent more movement speed. And dude, this thing says it can stack up to twenty times. Twenty times five is a hundred. <laughs> well isn't I mean the game has that, a movement movement speed cap, right? Yeah. What the heck? Like <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're gonna be freaking flying, bro. Yeah. Unless, I mean, I, I don't know what they're doing with this one, but I mean, it sounds cool in theory, but uh, dude, I might run this in PVE just to, you know, whenever I kill stuff, I'll just be freaking cruising like a cruising for a bruising type thing. So, yeah, the flash. Yeah. Uh, the next set, Stygian, 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 yeah. something like that. This set now grants hybrid stats rather than exclusively Magicka based stats. Its four piece bonus is now offensive pen rather than max Magicka, and the five piece bonus now requires you to be in combat to proc. Note that this set will work successfully with sneak attacks. Interesting. Oh, let's see what else, what else. I think that's pretty much it on the agenda. Did we want to talk about anything else, Grim? Oh, did we talk about the hybrid stuff, or not yet? Um, not yet. I mean, I'll release a video as long as everybody, you know, like if you leave a comment in below. I was thinking about going through each individual class and just kind of giving my two cents on abilities and combinations or rotations you might be seeing coming up in the next patch. Um, with hybrids. I've had a lot of experience playing hybrids on every class and it's previously been one of the hardest things to do is play, play in PvP a true hybrid, but I have a feeling it's going to be much easier so I could give everybody at least my two cents on every single class and play style if, if they want it. Yeah. I think that would be very informative and pretty cool. Might yeah. even uh, stretch it out and make six videos. Yeah, we could do that. Oh, and I see and I haven't even talked about this yet, but um, this is a homage to Sawman UK. Uh, I think we need to get Sawman UK on the show. What do you think, I see? Yeah, I Ooh. would be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no calls with me. Okay, so 
if you've watched a saw man uk video you'll know what we're talking about but uh 69 likes and we'll get saw man uk on the on the next or uh, up one of the upcoming three skeever podcasts so Je 69 likes jesus graham that's very inappropriate i don't know what you're talking about man mm -hmm. all <laughs> right all right just don't let me here, don't just don't come back to me with another story about you and Fragman doing whatever you guys are doing by the Sithis Waste Run or whatever. <laughs> Every Wednesday. <laughs> Every Wednesday. No, not the Sithis Waste. Um, not the Sithis uh, Shrine. The is the vampire. Yeah, was it the Matron or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whatever. That's where you guys do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So. I guess we're just going to wrap this one up here and yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya. See ya. Bye. You're going to say bye-bye Argonians. Bye-bye Argonians.